It was 1920, a story of a young sign painter named Thomas Young, but a man who was fascinated with more than colorful painted signs, a man who saw electricity as energizing the artist's palette, and he would lay the groundwork for changing America's urban landscape for the next 100 years. But he would also start a legacy of a family, of a company that became the extended family, a legacy that also defined sign making for the next 100 years, a legacy that has lighted the way for a century. It's a wonderful blessing and a wonderful feeling. We're just grateful for Yesco. 100 years. This is the story of Yesco, over 100 years in the making. All the story of a company and a family and values that started with a 24-year-old immigrant. Now a sign painter needed good camel hair brushes, gold leaf, and razor blades. But Thomas Young also needed to satisfy a curiosity. It was how can you build a cutting edge electric sign and make it the best, as good as you found on the coast. He loved Los Angeles, he loved the activity. There were a lot of signs that were far more advanced in design and installation on a building, you know, the method of installation. He wrote to a Los Angeles neon sign company, we are interested in finding out a little about the new tubular lighted glass signs, which we are informed you are manufacturing. The papers of the 1920s detailed his new fangled equipment in his Ogden plant and his trips to the coast to just look at signs. He redesigned his plant with a new room reserved for neon. He made sure the word electric was part of the company logo and was shipping electric signs all over town in a Model T truck. A Model T that would start a fleet now numbering over 500 trucks. So now he had to sell the signs Oh, it took quite a bit of salesmanship, quite a bit. We are yours for a good job throughout. In 1922, to sell a sign, he agreed to paint the inside and outside of the Utah Cigar Store, and then put up an electric sign, all for $247.50. Thomas Young and his brothers were already lighting the way for a new era of signs. Even though the signs were kind of expensive, take a 19 by 9 foot sign. A first class job is guaranteed all around for the sum of $160 complete, which includes hanging. His brother Fred Young was sending in orders from the field and it was getting better all the time. I find the business outlook for neon signs is becoming better. I will soon be in a position to send you a substantial check. People had certainly heard of Yesco signs in northern Utah, but Thomas Young wasn't satisfied. There was one goal that hadn't been realized. He wanted a sign on Main Street, Salt Lake City. One of Dad's great desires before we moved from Ogden was we got to get a sign on Main Street. I think the first sign Dad put up was the Star Style Shop. It was a ladies and men's uh, ready-to-wear store on the west side of Main Street. But there was no bigger statement than the Salt Lake Tribune sign, which came soon after right in the heart of Main Street. It was big. It was colorful. Uh, Main Street was lighting up. Others were putting signs on the front of their buildings. As mentioned, sure, there was the star stylish clothes sign already on Main, but the Tribune sign would be the crown jewel that started with a simple sketch. Even its construction was big news. Anticipation mounted as Yesco mounted a ton and a half of steel 
on the Tribune building. A jewel to make a blazing debut. Words like huge and flash became headlines. Very prominent on the front of that uh, rather stately building right there in, on Main Street. And uh, it was all neon. It would be 1,500 feet of what the paper called intense. And Yesco had also created a new iconic feature, an eight-foot thermometer. No one will ever have to walk downtown and ask, what do you think the temperature is? And the big moment arrived. Brilliant. Yes, Thomas Young was on Main Street. Fancy marquees became the stars of the early theaters. The Piri Egyptian was one of the biggest. It would be billed as one of the most beautiful and modernistic neon theater marquees in the Intermountain West. Designed, engineered, and constructed by Young Electric Sign Company. Park City's Egyptian would follow, now famous as the Sundance Festival marquee, the Roxy, the Center, and at the Paramount, Yesco had become more than a marquee for Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy in Naughty Marietta. Yesco's Fred Young had become a movie critic, saying, I'll bet I have told enough people about Naughty Marietta to fill your theater in Ogden. I saw it twice in Salt Lake, and we'll see it again in Ogden. They had just come out of the silent picture era into their location on Main Street, and so they wanted to play up the pictures, and so the signs were the main attraction to get people in there. The Marquis were engineering wonders. Thomas, the sign painter, knew he would need people who knew how to hang tons of steel over the sidewalks. When he first started up in, in business in Ogden, first thing he did was hire good people. People that were talented, dedicated, and willing to learn. And most of these marquees came from the mind and hand drawings of Ben Jones Sr., one of the geniuses hired by artist Thomas Young. His marquees would get bigger and better, and the best was probably the villa. It would have thousands of feet of neon and 2,400 incandescent bulbs. The sign would win National Electric Sign Association honors. Indeed, the Tribune and the theaters got Yesco on Main Street, and they got Thomas Young to move to Salt Lake City in 1937. By then, he had looked to other main streets in the West. He designed and Ben Jones Sr. engineered, and the national industry noticed. Thomas Young became president of the National Sign Association in 1937 and was re-elected in 1941 to serve during the war years. Now the war really dimmed the electric sign business. World War II hit us like a brick. And so we lost most of our workers, except those who were overage. And like me, I was underage and couldn't go to war. And uh, uh, so that was a hard struggle, getting people to help. Yesco, of course, did what it could in support of the effort. Economically, the company was now relying on service contracts and leases. And that positioned Yesco for expansion after the war. Yesco, over 100 years in the making. <laughs>